Life of Piccolo from Dragon Ball. Piccolo Jr., usually just called Piccolo or Kamikolo, and also known as Ma Jr., is a Namekian and also the final child and reincarnation of King Piccolo, later becoming the reunification of the nameless Namekian after fusing with Kami. According to Grand Elder Guru, Piccolo, along with Kami and King Piccolo, are part of the Dragon Clan, who were the original creators of the Dragon Balls. A wise and cunning warrior, he was the main antagonist in the final saga of Dragon Ball, the Piccolo Jr. saga, and was thus a ruthless enemy of Goku. However, starting with the first saga of Dragon Ball Z, the Raditz saga, he began to lose all villainous traits, and when he started training Goku's son, Gohan, during the Vegeta saga which led to the two developing a strong bond with each other, he became a permanent member of the Dragon Team, and eventually one of Earth's greatest heroes. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video we're going over the life of Piccolo. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. King Piccolo Saga Piccolo Jr. is the reincarnation of his father, King Piccolo, who himself was once a part of the nameless Namek, who fought a war over Earth only to be eventually killed by Goku. Piccolo Jr. Saga After being punched through the chest and killed by Goku's penetrate attack, King Piccolo's last action was to spit out an egg containing his child and reincarnation Piccolo Jr., who was to avenge his death. Upon Piccolo's birth, he still remembered all of King Piccolo's memories and techniques. Piccolo Jr.'s egg eventually flows down a river and is found by an elderly woman. The woman gets her husband and wonders what it is. Before they can decide what to do with the egg, Piccolo hatches. The newly emerged Piccolo then destroys their home. Piccolo Jr. spends the next three years in intensive training, preparing himself for the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament, where he knew Goku would be a contestant with the intent to kill him and realize his parents' dream of taking over the world. During the three-year wait until the tournament, Piccolo wanders the earth and trains for his revenge against Goku. During his wandering, he encounters a family celebrating the birthday of a young boy named Tai. During the boy's birthday celebration, Piccolo vandalizes their home and then runs away from their dog when Tai's father orders it to chase him. When the dog nearly catches up to the young Namekian, Piccolo blasts it away in fear with the beam, realizing some of the potential he has. After spending three years training, a now physically adolescent Piccolo enters the tournament using the Aegilius Jr. The day before the tournament, Piccolo saves a kid from falling rubble, but then people run away after they see him. Piccolo manages to find Goku before the tournament properly begins, and Piccolo reminds himself not to let Goku win, and that he must avenge his father. When the tournament starts, Piccolo easily breezed past the preliminaries and into the finals. From there, he first faced off against Goku's friend Krillin. Though Piccolo managed to beat him with relative ease, even believing at one point that he had killed the small warrior, Piccolo was surprised by Krillin's resilience and his ability to fly. Krillin even managed to score a hit, but missed Piccolo using a Kamehameha Blast as Piccolo had used an afterimage trick and managed to knock Krillin back to the ground. In their fight, Krillin eventually gave up, realizing he could not beat Piccolo. His next match is against a powerful but awkward human named Hiro, whom Piccolo soon discovers was actually Kami, the good counterpart of Piccolo, in disguise by means of possessing a weak, everyday hero. When Kami attempts to use Evil Containment Wave to seal Piccolo in a small container, Piccolo surprises everyone by reflecting it and instead capturing Kami. Piccolo then swallows the bottle, making chances of freeing Kami to seem very slim, what is apparently the only way to rescue Kami is to kill Piccolo, and if that happens, Kami will also die. Piccolo Jr.'s next fight is the one he was waiting for, the match or rematch with Goku. Though Piccolo uses an assortment of powerful techniques, Goku finds a way to make many of them work to his advantage. Goku manages to free Kami from captivity when Piccolo increases his size, tricking him into getting so large that Goku could go down his throat and get the bottle. However, even after Goku seemingly defeated Piccolo by using the Meteor Combination attack, firing his new Super Kamehameha technique at Piccolo, Piccolo manages to cripple Goku's arms and legs after surprising him with a mouth energy wave, 
through his shoulder, saying that he will not make the same mistake that his father did, which was letting Goku have one working arm. In the end, Piccolo loses narrowly, with Goku using flight on screen for the first time and knocking Piccolo out of the ring with a headbutt. He's shown mercy when Goku gives him a senzu bean, which fully heals him instantly much to the shock and horror of his friends. Piccolo holds little gratitude for this act though, and promises to continue his quest to destroy Goku and take over the world someday, before leaving the tournament. Saiyan Saga After his defeat at the hands of Goku, Piccolo vowed to continue his quest to avenge his father and kill Goku, and flies off into the sky. Five years later, and Piccolo has since continued to train in order to reach his goal, but one day he has a brief confrontation with the Saiyan Raditz, who found Piccolo due to his scouter when he was trying to locate his brother Kakarot, or Goku. In complete awe over the sudden arrival of this stranger, Piccolo demands to know Raditz's origins and intentions. Raditz smirks at Piccolo's demands, to which Piccolo retaliates with a destructive wave. Raditz shrugs off Piccolo's most powerful technique without a single dent, with Piccolo trembling in fear. Before Raditz can murder Piccolo, his scouter locates another strong power level. This makes Raditz ultimately ignore Piccolo in favor of his true target, whose power reading he had initially mistaken Piccolo's for due to their similar levels of progress, his younger brother Kakarot, who turned out to be Goku. Piccolo follows Raditz to Kame House, where Goku and his child Gohan went to meet up with old friends. Piccolo learns of Raditz's plan to destroy humanity by hiding behind the house and listening into the conversation with his strong hearing abilities. When Raditz easily subdues Goku and kidnaps Gohan, Piccolo offers Goku a temporary truce in the face of this new threat, intending to resume his ongoing struggle with Goku afterward. Goku agrees, despite the pleas of his friends against the idea, and the two make their way to defeat Raditz. Once Goku and Piccolo locate Raditz, Goku makes a feeble effort to rescue his son through discussion rather than action, but this fails, resulting in a battle. Raditz easily tackles both Piccolo and Goku, managing to sneak attack and surprise them every chance he gets, with Piccolo and Goku not even being able to land a single hit. When the battle takes to the air, Raditz fires two energy waves downwards at Goku and Piccolo. Goku easily dodges, but Piccolo is less fortunate, with his left arm being lost by disintegration. With the battle seemingly hopeless, Piccolo asks Goku if he's developed any new techniques to assist in these kinds of battles. Goku answers he has not, with Piccolo scoffing at Goku's lack of planning or preparation. Piccolo reveals he's developed a technique to pierce even the strongest of bodies, naming it the Special Beam Cannon. Piccolo demands for Goku to buy him extra time to charge the technique, but states the wait will be worth it. As Goku begins to get pummeled, Piccolo finishes charging the attack, but is now in even more woe as he fears Raditz will be fast enough to evade. Piccolo's prediction comes true, as he fires the blast, Raditz manages to sidestep the attack, taking off only a small fragment of his battle armor. Raditz discovers his earlier assumptions on Goku and Piccolo's power levels were wrong, as he now knows Goku and Piccolo both have the ability to raise their power levels over 1000, something Raditz was unaware of at first. When all hope seems lost, as Raditz starts to pummel Goku into submission by breaking his ribs, Goku's young son Gohan intervenes after destroying the pod he was contained in and charges towards Raditz, damaging Raditz's armor and hurting him greatly by smashing into his chest. Now, due to Raditz being much weaker from the assault, Piccolo manages to mortally wound Raditz with the special beam cannon, although Goku sacrifices his life in the process to restrain Raditz. And Piccolo thus avenges his father at a bit of an unexpected moment. Before dying, however, Raditz tricked Piccolo into telling him about the Dragon Balls, and reveals that two other more powerful Saiyans, Nappa and Vegeta, will be arriving on Earth in one year. In anger, Piccolo finishes Raditz off with one final blow, rather than making him suffer, an action noticed by Kami who suspects that Piccolo is changing. When Goku dies shortly afterwards, his body mysteriously vanishes, with Piccolo confirming Kami's intervention. Anyone killed by Piccolo before he turned good would be sent to Limbo, with their spirit wandering in agony. Since Goku and Raditz did not suffer this fate after Piccolo killed them, Kami cited this as an indication that Piccolo was becoming less evil. With the news of even more powerful opponents soon to arrive, Piccolo takes Gohan to break Wasteland in order to train the boy and raise his survival skills, so Piccolo can use Gohan's massive potential to help defend the Earth from the Saiyans, and originally, to help Piccolo take over the world afterwards. 
though his treatment to Gohan is initially harsh, leaving him alone in the wasteland for six months to raise his survival techniques, then brutally training the boy for the next six months, he begins to warm up to Gohan, and the two form an unbreakable bond. While the training occurred, Piccolo shows a little affection for Gohan in the first night of his six-month survival training by giving him three apples, as Gohan had not eaten anything in days. Piccolo does become annoyed when Gohan complains about the apple's bitter taste, remarking Gohan will need to let go of his time with his parents who pampered and spoiled him. Suddenly, Gohan transforms into a great ape and proceeds to destroy the wasteland around him, much to Piccolo's shock and slight fear. Piccolo seemingly destroys the moon to turn Gohan back to normal, knowing the two invading Saiyans could use this technique to their advantage as well. Piccolo then proceeds to remove Gohan's tail, and makes him new training clothes and a sword. When Vegeta and Nappa arrive on Earth, they're met by Gohan, Goku's friend Krillin, Tzu, Tian Shin Han, Yamcha, and Piccolo. Goku had been wished back to life, but would take several hours to arrive. Piccolo soon learns from the Saiyans that he's a Namekian, rather than a demon as he previously believed. The Saiyans then start the fight off by growing six Saiba men, small, humanoid, plant-like aliens grown from the ground who all have power equal to Raditz's 1200, which they instruct to fight in a mock tournament against the Earth's defenders. The Saiba men are all destroyed, though Yamcha is killed in the battle when one of them manages to grip him and self-destruct, killing them both. Piccolo destroys the last remaining Cybermen after it attacks Gohan with a punch in the stomach followed by a mouth blast, disintegrating it. With the Cybermen gone, Nappa, the larger Saiyan, decides to enter combat. In the ensuing fight, Chiaotzu and Tian perish, and the defenders of the Earth are heavily beaten. When Chiaotzu prepares to self-destruct while holding Nappa, Piccolo orders Gohan to watch Chiaotzu's sacrifice and then proceeds to compliment Xiaotzu by saying that he has won his respect for his sacrifice to take down a powerful enemy. Despite Piccolo landing some decent hits and planning team attacks with Krillin and Gohan, Nappa seems invincible. During one of the team attacks, when Gohan gives in to his fear and runs away from Nappa instead of blasting him as Piccolo ordered, Piccolo deems Gohan a failure, and when the three hour break occurs, suggests Gohan should go home, as to not be a distraction in this fight. Remembering that during his fight with Raditz, Goku pulled and squeezed his tail tightly and had caused him unbearable pain, Piccolo attempted the same feat and got a hold of Nappa's tail, discussed with Krillin and Gohan after having a three hour break. But the monstrous Saiyan revealed that he and Vegeta were immune to that handicap and knocked the Namek unconscious for a short time. Later in the battle, when Nappa attempts to finish off Krillin with a final blast, Piccolo saves him just in time with a small hand blast launched at Nappa's back. When the smaller but more powerful Saiyan named Vegeta detects that Goku is arriving, and that he's more powerful than anticipated, being read at 5000 without powering up already, he orders Nappa to quickly kill the remaining defenders, as their working with Goku might result in a challenge. Goku's resurrection proves that the Dragon Balls are legitimate, so they can use the ones on Namek and do not need the ones located on Earth. Nappa first aims for Gohan with an extremely powerful attack, but Piccolo jumps in the way of it, sacrificing himself to save Gohan. His body ruined, Piccolo falls to the ground. With tears in his eyes, Piccolo bids farewell to Gohan, whom he admits made him soft and is the only person to ever call him friend. Piccolo's death also results in Kami's passing, as they were once a single being and therefore if one dies, then so would the other. After the Saiyans are beaten by Goku and the remaining fighters, and Vegeta retreats, Gohan, Krillin, and the brilliant inventor Bulma head to Namek to locate the Dragon Balls so they can wish Kami, Piccolo, Yamcha, Tien, and Xiaotzu back to life and restore the Dragon Balls of Earth. Frieza Saga as Goku was forced to do after his noble death, Piccolo travels down the winding snake way to King Kai's planet. There, he, Chiaotzu, Tian, and Yamcha all train under the watchful eye of King Kai. While it is unknown if he ever learned any of King Kai's secret techniques, Piccolo's power does increase so significantly that even Nail, a warrior-type Namekian with a power level of 42,000, notes it as unbelievable. On Namek, Gohan, Krillin, and Dende, a young Namekian who Krillin and Gohan had previously saved, gather the Namekian Dragon Balls and summon the Namekian Dragon, Porunga. Piccolo contacts Gohan via King Kai's telepathy and demands he be resurrected with the first wish, 
be sent to Namek to battle Frieza with the second, and then Gohan could do whatever with the last wish. Piccolo's reasoning was that if he is brought back, then the Earth Dragon Balls will immediately return alongside Kami, allowing for wishes to be made to bring back Tien, Xiao Tzu, and Yamcha. Piccolo soon arrives on Namek at a random point, since Gohan did not specify where on Namek he would be sent when he asked Dende to have Porunga grant the wishes. After recovering from the initial shock of seeing his strangely familiar homeland for the first time and feeling the suffering of his people, Piccolo heads in the direction of a large energy source, believing it to be Frieza. During his flight, he passes over a dying Namekian, Nail, who was earlier easily mauled by Frieza. Piccolo drops down to inspect the crippled Namekian and they begin to converse. Nail offers Piccolo to join with him, as the option of merging with his counterpart Kami could not be realized here, nor did Piccolo even want to be one with him at this point. At first, Piccolo refuses, but Nail explains that Piccolo will not lose his personality. He will only feel the power gained from the fusion. Piccolo reluctantly accepts, and after the fusion is complete, he's amazed by his awesome new power and rushes to Frieza's location. When Piccolo arrives, he finds a battle in progress between Gohan, Krillin, and Vegeta, who has rebelled against Frieza, with Dende supporting them against Frieza. He then takes on Frieza, with the doubt of Krillin and Vegeta, who's in his second form, alone, and is able to go blow for blow with him, even without removing his weighted clothing. Vegeta became shocked to find that the Namekian that Nappa killed with ease mere months ago had become so powerful. After a brief exchange of blows, Frieza transforms into his third form and assaults Piccolo with a large barrage of invisible and virtually unavoidable shots, crippling him. An angry Gohan intervenes and blasts Frieza with a full power Masenko, but Frieza knocks it back and Piccolo uses the last of his strength to deflect the projectile with one of his own before it can hit the young Saiyan. Frieza then begins his final transformation into his true form, and Gohan uses the opportunity to take Piccolo to Dende, who has the ability to heal others completely. Piccolo quickly recovers, but he knows that he is even more thoroughly outclassed by Frieza's new form. Frieza begins his renewed attack with a single blast that kills Dende, having seen him healing Piccolo midway into his transformation, preventing the warriors from being healed again. Gohan, Krillin, and Piccolo respond with a joint assault, but Frieza seemingly effortlessly avoids all of their attacks. Piccolo is then reduced to the sidelines, watching as a strengthened Vegeta attacks and falls against Frieza, helpless to intervene. After Goku arrives, Gohan, Krillin, and Piccolo get out of his way, after witnessing Vegeta's murder at the hands of Frieza. He watches Goku and Frieza duel from afar. He also implies that he would like to fight Goku when it's over, though only for kicks. Goku is soon overwhelmed by Frieza once he powers up to 50% of his power, nullifying even Goku's Kamehameha fired with a 20-fold Kaioken boosting his power, and in desperation attempts to use the Spirit Bomb. In order to buy Goku some time, Piccolo takes most of the remaining ki from Gohan and Krillin and jumps in to help, catching Frieza off guard and kicking him in the head, giving Goku just enough time to finish the Spirit Bomb and launch it towards Frieza, seemingly killing him. Piccolo drags Goku's body out of the water and meets up with Gohan and Krillin, celebrating. Just as our heroes rejoice, Frieza towers above them, revealing to still be alive, and shoots a powerful beam meant for Goku. After witnessing both Piccolo being heavily wounded and Krillin being blown to pieces by Frieza, Goku finally had enough and unleashed his hidden Super Saiyan powers. Gohan carried Piccolo off the battlefield as Goku and Frieza clashed on the dying planet Namek with the former emerging as the victor. Piccolo is healed by Dende, who had been wished back to life along with the rest of the people killed by Frieza and his men, after being sent to Earth by a wish made to Porunga. When the Namekians find a planet suitable to be new Namek, Piccolo declines to travel with them, and he stays on Earth with Gohan to protect and watch over the boy. Piccolo does not desire the peaceful, therefore dull life to be had on Namek, and instead wishes to keep training in order to become more powerful. Frieza Androids Interlude One year after the events on Namek, Piccolo sensed Frieza and another powerful being heading towards Earth. He headed to the area where he detected they would land and was soon joined by Vegeta, Yamcha, Puar, Bulma, Tien, Xiao Tzu, Krillin, and Gohan. Despair sets in on the group as they realize that there's little they can do to oppose such powerful foes. 
Soon after Frieza and his father, King Cold, land, they're confronted by a mysterious youth who reveals himself to be a Super Saiyan and almost effortlessly destroys the father-son duo along with their minions. Piccolo and the others follow the youth, who tells them when and where Goku will be arriving. Just as the boy predicted, Goku lands and the boy converses with him privately, though Piccolo's superior hearing allows him to listen in. The boy, known as Future Trunks, is the future son of Vegeta and Bulma, and reveals a terrible plot by Dr. Jiro, a scientist for the non-active Red Ribbon Army, to create powerful androids for the sole purpose of annihilating Goku. The androids soon spiral out of control, and after murdering their creator, go on to destroy everything around them, making Future Trunks' world a nightmare, where they kill all but a few tens of thousands of the population. They eventually kill all the Z Fighters with the exception of Goku, who dies from a heart disease six months prior to the attack of the androids. Future Trunks has come back in time to both give Goku the medicine to cure the disease, and to give the Z Fighters ample warning. Future Trunks then departs back to his own timeline, and Piccolo, since Goku does not know how to tell the group what he has discovered, explains everything to the group, except the identity of Future Trunks. The group then splits up and begins training for the oncoming threat, with Piccolo deciding to do his training alongside Goku and Gohan, which would later prove to be a very wise decision. Android Saga Three years have passed by, and Goku, Krillin, Piccolo, Tien, and Yamcha meet at the designated time to confront the androids, with Vegeta and Future Trunks coming. Yajirobe drops by briefly to give the group Senzu beans, and as he was leaving, his hover car had been destroyed. Still not sensing their opponents, Gohan realized that being androids, they have no key to detect, and therefore must be searched for by sight. Piccolo and the others enter the city to search, but do not know what the androids look like. They soon detect a large drop in Yamcha's key and rush to the scene, finding both the two androids and a critically wounded Yamcha with a hole through his gut. Goku soon leads the androids to a different location so that the city is not destroyed in their fight, though the androids demolish a large portion of it before they leave. The androids choose to fight in a desolate region filled with rocky hills. Piccolo surmises that they chose the location so that they could escape to the hills if the fight does not go their way. After the androids explain that they've been watching Goku since he defeated the Red Ribbon Army up until his battle with Vegeta, Goku attacks Android 19. The androids did not know of his ability to go Super Saiyan and therefore his true strength. Piccolo is startled after Goku transforms because his power is much lower than it should be. Though Goku seems to be winning in the early part of the fight, he quickly loses his energy due to his heart disease and is eventually taken down by Android 19. Piccolo and the others attempt to intervene, but Android 20 blocks their path and blasts Piccolo with one of his eye beams sending him crashing to the ground. Vegeta then arrives, kicking Android 19 off of Goku, and Piccolo quickly gets back up, revealing that he was pretending to be injured in order to catch the androids off guard. Vegeta then kicks Goku out of the battle and Piccolo catches him, setting him down so Yamcha can take him home and give him the heart medicine that Future Trunks gave them. Vegeta and Android 19 then battle, with Vegeta revealing his ability to go Super Saiyan and destroying 19 after confirming his ability to drain energy using the jewels embedded in his palms. Vegeta, severely drained from the fight with Android 19, acts as if he is eager for a quick follow-up fight with Android 20. Nervous of Vegeta's new power, Android 20 fails to call the bluff and flees to the hills, while Vegeta is restored with a Senzu Bean. Piccolo and the others start searching the hills for Android 20, but Piccolo is soon ambushed. With Android 20 holding a tight grip over his mouth and draining his energy, Piccolo sends out a telepathic message to Gohan. Gohan is alerted to the situation and heads for Piccolo Jr.'s now shrinking key. He finds Piccolo and smashes Android 20 off of his mentor. Piccolo receives a Senzu Bean from Krillin and states that he will fight Android 20 himself. Android 20 is taken off guard by Piccolo's speed, and he quickly hits the Android with several powerful blows, which surprises the Android because he did not expect for Piccolo to be this powerful. The Namekian finishes the battle with a powerful chop which takes off Android 20's right arm, while also referring to how he was formerly like Dr. Jiro, and consumed with the desire of revenge against Goku for his involvement in destroying a paternal figure of his, and then sends him smashing into the ground, badly beaten. Krillin was astonished by Piccolo's power, believing Piccolo was extremely powerful for someone who is not a Super Saiyan. At this time, Future Trunks shows up and states that Android 20 is not one of the androids which caused such devastation in the future, having already seen the lifeless head that 19 was reduced into by Vegeta earlier. 
Bulma follows them closely in her sky car, and Android 20 sees his opportunity to escape and lets out an energy wave, destroying Bulma's vehicle and distracting everyone while he runs away, stating that he's going to activate Android 17 and 18. Bulma informs the group that Android 20 is actually Dr. Jiro, who reconstructed himself into an android, and the location of his lab in North City. Piccolo then tells Bulma about future Trunks, who at this point is already born in the main timeline. He then takes off with Krillin and Tien to North City to find Dr. Jiro's lab and destroy the androids before they can be awakened. Krillin finds the lab and alerts the others but they arrive too late and the androids are activated. The twin androids then display mutiny on the creator by killing him, and against Jiro's wishes, awakening another android, Android 16. Vegeta takes off after them and Piccolo and the others follow. When they catch up, they find that Vegeta has been fighting Android 18 and is not doing so well against the female android due to his declining stamina. Android 17 warns them that if they get involved in the fight, he will step in as well. They watch the fight, and though Vegeta seems to be on roughly equal footing at first glance, something that surprises future Trunks because he never knew his father to be so powerful, Piccolo points out that Vegeta was tiring with every move and the android was not. When Future Trunks gets involved in the fight after Vegeta receives a serious kick that breaks his arm, Piccolo also charges in, but both are quickly swatted down by Android 17. Krillin gives each of the warriors a Senzu Bean, and Piccolo states he has an idea. When Krillin asks what it is, Piccolo angrily snaps at him and then abruptly takes off to the lookout. Piccolo does not need to explain to Kami why he's come, Kami having already read his thoughts that Piccolo wishes to fuse with him and become whole once again. Piccolo rebuffs Kami, stating that they're not fusing on an equal level, and will simply be using the old Namekian as a tool to become more powerful, stating that the only reason that Kami even exists now in the face of all the converging foes is for the Dragon Balls. Regardless, Kami is not opposed to the idea of fusing with Piccolo, but he wants to observe the situation a while longer to be sure that his last decision is made for valid reasons. Piccolo starts to argue with him, but Kami counters by pointing out that even future Trunks stated these androids are different, being much, much more powerful for one, and for having spared their lives, whereas the future counterparts killed them outright, and that it was Vegeta who started the fight they just had. Piccolo calls Kami a coward for his reluctance and waits on the lookout for him to make up his mind. When Kami learns of the recent arrival of a danger from the future far greater than the androids, he realizes he has no choice. With Piccolo serving as the base form, they merge into one being, becoming the nameless Namekian once again, himself stating that he was no longer Kami or Piccolo. Cell Saga Piccolo rushes to Ginger Town, the location of this murderous new enemy. The bug-like creature claims that he is Piccolo's brother, which shocks Piccolo and the two engage in battle. Piccolo seems to have the upper hand, but he's taken off guard when the creature launches a Kamehameha at Piccolo, which shocked him as the move was Goku's attack. As he was dodging the blast, the creature latches onto Piccolo's back and stings his left arm, draining the life from it and rendering the limb useless and withered. Piccolo headbutts the creature and breaks free, but claims that with this injury he has been defeated, luring the creature into explaining its actions. The creature reveals his name as Cell, and that he's a combination of Earth's greatest warriors put together by Dr. Jiro. His purpose is to locate Android 17 and Android 18, and take their energy by absorbing them into his being so that he may achieve his perfect form. Now knowing the creature's origin and intentions, Piccolo exposes his ruse, tearing the withered left arm free and growing a healthy one in its place, now prepared to resume battle with Imperfect Cell. Future Trunks and Krillin soon arrive, and Imperfect Cell, now outnumbered, uses the Solar Flare, inherited from either Goku or the Technique's coiner Tien, and escapes. Tien and Vegeta soon arrive, and Piccolo explains the nature of Cell to them. He and Tien then search for Cell as the monster travels from town to town, absorbing people's energy, but Imperfect Cell detects their key and then lowers his own and hides every time they get close. Piccolo begins traveling on a jet plane, piloted by Yamcha with Gohan, Krillin, and Tien, so that they can keep their key hidden while searching for the creature. While searching, a recovered Goku teleports onto the plane and explains that he has a plan for himself, Future Trunks, Gohan, and Vegeta to use the hyperbolic time chamber in order to train for a year in the span of one Earth day. He then takes Gohan and teleports back to Kami's lookout. Piccolo and the rest keep searching, but Piccolo begins to despair, knowing that with each town imperfect cell attacks, his strength grows, and the monster will soon be powerful enough to confront and absorb the androids. Piccolo and the rest soon return to Kame House. By good or bad luck, the androids soon arrive, demanding the location of Goku so that they may kill him and finish their game. 
Piccolo decides to use this opportunity to try and destroy them, thereby preventing them from being absorbed by Imperfect Cell. They then head to deserted tropical islands and Piccolo learns that he will only have to fight Android 17, giving him a chance at victory. He and 17 are roughly equal in strength, and though Piccolo does not have the infinite energy of his opponent, he does have several tricks up his sleeve that prove an outstanding resistance, such as his amazing regeneration abilities and his variety of energy attacks, such as the Hell Zone Grenade. However, Cell arrives in the middle of their fight. With his increase in strength from absorbing countless humans from various cities, Imperfect Cell is now considerably more powerful than Piccolo, and on top of that, Piccolo has expended a considerably large amount of his energy battling Android 17. After 17 is attacked by Cell, Piccolo steps in to help, but is easily swatted aside. Without any other options, Piccolo uses his desperation attack, the Light Grenade, and destroys the island that they were fighting on. However, Imperfect Cell bears no damage from the attack due to his superior strength, and sets his eyes on the weary Namekian. Realizing that the both of them can do nothing to defeat Cell, Piccolo warns Seventeen to run. However, he's interrupted by Cell, with one swift punch, which snaps the brave Namek's neck and takes him down. Seeing no need to absorb him, Cell picks Piccolo up from the ground, blasts a hole clean through his stomach, and tosses him into the ocean, leaving him for dead. Luckily, Piccolo barely managed to survive thanks to his regeneration and is soon rescued by Goku and taken back to Kami's lookout, along with Tien who had distracted Cell to stop him from absorbing Android 18. Piccolo quickly recovers, but with Imperfect Cell having absorbed Android 17, and now in his even more powerful semi-perfect form, he can do nothing but watch. He observed as Super Vegeta first defeated semi-perfect Cell, and then allowed him to absorb Android 18 and attain his perfect form. He also witnessed Perfect Cell's subsequent victory over Future Trunks and his announcement of the Cell Games, giving the Earth's defenders 10 days to prepare for his tournament. When Goku and Gohan emerge from the hyperbolic time chamber, Gohan requests for Piccolo to give him a copy of his uniform, which Piccolo happily conjures up for him. He is also startled by how much more powerful Goku became with his mastery over the Super Saiyan form. Piccolo enters the hyperbolic time chamber and, although becoming significantly stronger, is still nowhere near powerful enough to challenge Perfect Cell. After he emerges, Goku asks him if it's possible for him to split with Kami again. Piccolo states that he cannot, so Goku instead goes to New Namek to recruit a new guardian, and returns with Dende, who takes the position and promptly reactivates the Dragon Balls. When the 10 day wait is over, Piccolo accompanies Goku and the others to the Cell games. He stays on the sidelines for most of the battle, but speaks up when Goku, after battling then yielding to Perfect Cell, volunteers Gohan to fight. Piccolo states that no matter how strong Gohan had become, there is no way he can fight Perfect Cell. He criticizes even further when Goku tosses a Senzu Bean to Perfect Cell so that the fight is fair. When Perfect Cell manages to grab Gohan in a bear hug and begins crushing him, Piccolo blames Goku for his actions, and then prepares to enter the battle, even though it likely means his death. Perfect Cell soon stops his attack though, deciding to target Gohan's friends instead. He soon spawns seven Cell Juniors, one for each Z fighter watching the fight. Piccolo does well against these Cell Juniors, managing to stand his ground despite Cell's comment that only Vegeta and Trunks were able to fight back, while the weary Goku and the powerless humans are gradually beaten to the ground, but is soon overwhelmed until Gohan finally snaps and transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 and defeats all of the Cell Juniors with ease, leaving all of the Z-Warriors to look on in shock. Gohan battled Cell, and was able to not only outmatch Cell, but also cause him to spit up Android 18 and revert to his semi-perfect form. Piccolo then witnessed Goku's noble sacrifice, as he teleported himself and a self-destructing Cell, who tried to blow himself up along with the Earth, to King Kai's planet, which was destroyed along with everybody who was present at the time. Goku, King Kai, Bubbles, and in the anime, Gregory. But Cell survived and became even stronger thanks to his Saiyan genes. He teleported back to Earth, he learned how to use the instant transmission technique, and after killing future Trunks, ensued in a Kamehameha duel with Gohan, who Cell had already weakened when Gohan attempted to save Vegeta from Cell's death beam. Piccolo, along with the other Z fighters, assisted Gohan in the duel by blasting Cell with various key blasts, as Piccolo was unwilling to let the person who taught him the value of friendship die all alone against Cell. The efforts of the Z fighters failed to phase Cell until Vegeta distracted him with an energy blast, which gave Gohan the time he needed to destroy Cell once and for all. Piccolo then lauded Vegeta on hitting Cell in an honorable move, but the latter just tells Piccolo to get lost. 
Piccolo returned to the lookout where he, upon being asked whether Gohan could come and see him again there, tells him he would bet on it. World Tournament Saga When Piccolo is informed by a now teenage Gohan that Goku is coming back to Earth for one day and that they're entering the World Martial Arts Tournament along with Android 18, who is reformed and married Krillin, Krillin and Vegeta, he decides to enter himself as well, under the alias of Ma Jr as he had previously done when participating in the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament during the Piccolo Jr. Saga of Dragon Ball. While there, Piccolo encounters a small purple alien who disturbs him deeply. When it's Piccolo's turn to fight, he faces the alien as his first opponent and finds that he's extremely reluctant to attack him, causing him to question just who this being is. The alien responds directly to Piccolo's thoughts, telling him that he'll soon find out enough, and that for now they should just enjoy the fight. Piccolo quickly surrenders the match without raising a fist. When they meet in the spectators area, Piccolo asks the alien if he is Grand Kai, the ruler of the Kais, a set of four gods who each watch over a quadrant of the galaxy. The alien's companion responds that he is actually the Supreme Kai, a much higher being who is above Grand Kai. Having much of Kami's essence, Piccolo is awed by Shin's presence, and extremely respectful of his place on the divine hierarchy. During a later fight between Gohan and Kibito, Gohan's energy is drained by two very oddly powerful humans after he is paralyzed by Shin, who intended to pursue the two to see where they would take the stolen energy. Shin then sets off to follow them, stating that any help would be appreciated. Piccolo immediately joins him, followed soon by Goku, Krillin, and Vegeta. As they travel, Shin informs them all that the two humans are possessed pawns of a wizard named Babidi and they are collecting energy to revive a powerful force of destruction known as Majin Buu. Piccolo and the others are joined by a fully recovered Gohan and Kibito, and then hide on a mountaintop near Babidi's ship and watch as he destroys the two human pawns as their job was done. The Z Fighters are then attacked by the Demon King Tabura, whom Babidi has possessed as his strongest henchman, with a power roughly equal to Perfect Cell. Tabura quickly kills Kibito and spits on Krillin and Piccolo, turning them both into stone statues. Majin Buu Saga After an awakened Majin Buu killed Dabura by turning him into a cookie and eating him, Piccolo returns to normal along with Krillin, but Piccolo was in pieces due to having been accidentally shattered by trunks when he was turned into stone. Fortunately, his head was not damaged, so he was able to completely regenerate. Upon returning to normal, the first thing Piccolo senses is the awesome power of Majin Buu and in the field in front of them he sees a badly beaten Shin about to be turned into a snack for the monster. He is torn about what to do, as his instinct is to aid Shin but he knows that he can do nothing against Majin Buu. Before Majin Buu can finish Shin off, he was attacked by Vegeta who is currently under Babidi's influence, but able to completely resist his control, and states that he will destroy Majin Buu in vengeance for the monster's supposed killing of Gohan shocking Piccolo with the news. Piccolo watches their fight and barely escapes along with Goten, Trunks, and Krillin after Majin Buu unleashes his angry explosion technique. When Majin Buu resumes the attack on a badly wounded Vegeta, Piccolo is unable to prevent Goten and Trunks from rushing into the battle themselves. The pair manages to temporarily halt Majin Buu, smashing him through some mountains while his guard was down, and then attempts to aid Vegeta. In the meantime, Piccolo confronts Babidi. Piccolo resists the wizard's demon eye and breaks his wizard barrier. When Babidi attempts to plead for his life, claiming that only he can prevent Majin Buu from becoming out of control, Piccolo states that it does not matter, as they will not allow Buu to live even if he is not alive, and chops the wizard in half, fatally injuring him and then spitting as a sign of spite. Piccolo watches as Vegeta knocks the two kids unconscious. When he descends to Vegeta, Vegeta asks Piccolo to take the children far from the battle site. Piccolo realizes that Vegeta plans on sacrificing himself. Vegeta confirms this by asking if he will see Kakarot, Goku's original Saiyan name, in the afterlife, and Piccolo states he will not because Vegeta has committed too many evil actions before joining the Z Fighters to be on the same plane as Goku, and he will instead be reincarnated after his spirit is purified. Piccolo, carrying the children, then retreats with Krillin until they witness the enormous explosion that Vegeta fueled despite all this in an attempt to protect Bulma and Trunks, and even Kakarot. After the blast had died down, Piccolo hands the kids to Krillin and tells him to tell everyone else what has happened, and then goes back to the battle site to see what's transpired. When he reaches the site, now a large crater, he pays his respects to Vegeta. He recalls about the time that he'd sacrificed himself to save Gohan's life many years ago, and bids farewell to the Saiyan Prince. 
He also finds a still barely alive Babidi, who survived due to his ability to conjure barriers. As he moves in to finish him off, Piccolo notices the pieces of Majin Buu moving. They quickly shape themselves into full miniature versions of Majin Buu and begin colliding into the other, reforming the original Majin Buu. He makes a fast retreat, catching up with Krillin and informing him that they have to go to Kami's lookout in the slight chance that it might offer sanctuary. Goku, who is rendered unconscious by Vegeta after a fight they had, soon arrives after them, and they trade stories, informing Piccolo of Vegeta's willingness to become Babidi's pawn in order to gain power and their subsequent battle. Piccolo says that Shin was right to fear Buu, and now the whole universe is in danger. Goku says he wanted to use the fusion dance that he learned from some Metamorans in the other world. Piccolo realizes Goku could have fused with Gohan or Vegeta if they were alive and defeated Majin Buu, but Mr. Popo suggests that Goten and Trunks can fuse, since they have near equal power and size. Goku thinks that's a great idea, and he says he'll teach them fusion until he has to leave, and then Piccolo can train them afterwards. Piccolo agrees, and Krillin gets excited at this faint glimmer of hope. However, Piccolo thinks that it will take a long time for the boys to master fusion, and many innocent lives will be lost to Majin Buu in the meantime. After Goku teleports all of his friends and family to the lookout, Babidi contacts all inhabitants of Earth telepathically, stating that he wants the location of Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo. He then introduces himself and Majin Buu, before having Buu show the people his strength. Babidi shows everyone an image of Piccolo, Trunks, and Goten again, and anyone who knows where they are had better speak up if they don't want to be turned into candy and eaten. He tells everyone they have five days and then ends the transmission. Piccolo is livid at this turn of events and wants to go to Babidi and prevent the loss of more lives. Goku tells Piccolo not to talk stupid because he needs him to teach the boys fusion when he goes back to other world. That's the only way to defeat Boo, and they can restore the people and the planet with the Dragon Balls. Piccolo agrees, and then calms down. When the boys wake up, Goku and Piccolo tell them about Vegeta and Gohan's apparent deaths at Majin Buu's hands, and that they need to learn fusion so that they can avenge them. Goku says they also have to hurry in case Babidi finds the lookout, so Piccolo suggests they use the hyperbolic time chamber. Goku says that someone can only use that room for at most two days in their lifetime, and that they may need it sometime in the future. As Goku begins teaching them the fundamentals of fusion, observing and training, Piccolo shows disbelief at how strong the two boys have become. All of a sudden, Babidi transmits another message into the minds of all the people on Earth. Still seeking revenge against Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo for assisting Vegeta during his battle with Majin Buu, Babidi informs everyone that has learned of the location of one of his targets, the Capsule Corporation in West City. In need of the Dragon Radar located there, Goku quickly changes plans and orders Trunks to fly home and retrieve the radar before Babidi reaches the city. Goku informs him that he'll fend off Buu and Babidi, so they do not reach the city in time. Trunks zips from the lookout and heads straight towards West City and his home. Meanwhile, Goku uses his instant transmission technique to confront Buu. During the battle, Goku displays his new Super Saiyan 3 transformation, leaving the Dragon team shocked. After Trunks retrieves the Dragon Radar, Goku returns to the lookout. Goku informs Piccolo that Buu killed Babidi, as he cannot sense the evil wizard's energy anymore. Goku says that Babidi got what he deserved, and he knew Buu would kill him eventually. Piccolo believes that Buu will become peaceful without Babidi giving him orders, but Goku says this is just wishful thinking. Just as Goku predicted, Majin Buu goes on a rampage and targets the remaining Earthlings on the planet. Piccolo curses him for thinking that Majin Buu would do nothing. Goku says that Buu enjoys destruction and killing at a whim. Piccolo comments that if Buu wanted to, he could easily destroy the planet and kill everyone in no time. Goku thinks it's unlikely as Buu was excited when he told him someone stronger would come in two days and concludes that the Earth will be safe until then, though he feels sorry for the people of Earth. Piccolo says that Goten and Trunks will have to master fusion within the next two days. Goku says that he probably only has an hour left of his remaining time on Earth with the boys. When Piccolo asks how this is possible, Goku reveals that the Super Saiyan 3 form used up most of his energy, and that is something that should only be used in other world as it uses way too much energy and exhausts the user completely in a place where time flows like Earth. Piccolo suggests having Dende restore his energy, but Goku refuses as there is another reason he wants to go back to other world, presumably to find out if Gohan is really dead. Suddenly, fortune teller Baba appears and says that Goku only has 30 minutes left and that he should be getting ready to return. While they wait for Trunks to return, Piccolo asks Goku if he could have defeated Majin Buu as a Super Saiyan 3, and Goku reveals he's unsure as Majin Buu's strength is incredible, and he thinks it's very likely he would have lost against Buu. 
Piccolo asks if he didn't go all out, was because of Super Saiyan 3's rapid energy consumption. Goku says no, and points out that as he is no longer a part of this world, it would be best to step back and leave the fight to the next generation, as you never know when an even stronger opponent will appear. Goku also admits they're taking a risk, but after seeing Goten and Trunks' potential, he thinks it's worth a try. Piccolo says that he's putting the fate of the planet in the hands of children, but Goku counters that it wouldn't be the first time, referencing Gohan. Piccolo tells Goku to give Gohan his regards when he sees him in Otherworld, causing Goku to say he thinks the worst thing about Gohan being dead is that he isn't able to see Piccolo anymore. Finally, Trunks returns to the lookout with the Dragon Radar. With little time remaining, Goku and Piccolo begin teaching Goten and Trunks the fusion dance. Goku is surprised to find Goten and Trunks are more obedient and respectful than before, causing Piccolo to comment that it seems Goku's Super Saiyan 3 transformation had been helpful with motivating them into cooperating as well. Continuing their training of the boys, Piccolo asks Goku if he's alright, because he seems tired. Goku insists he's okay, while Piccolo contemplates how much energy Super Saiyan 3 uses in the living world. Goku demonstrates the moves for the fusion dance and everyone is speechless. Goku says they'll both have to do it with left and right symmetry, but the boys don't know what that means. So Goku wants Piccolo to try it with him to show the boys, but Piccolo is quite reluctant. Nevertheless, Goku and Piccolo mirror each other's movements, ending up with their fingers touching. Goku tells the boys to do the dance now. Piccolo says that even if Vegeta were alive, he would never have done this, and Goku isn't sure why. As Goten and Trunks attempt to fuse, Goku strictly tells the boys to correct their movements. Unfortunately, Fortune Teller Baba arrives, saying that it's time for Goku to go back to the other world now. Goku tells Piccolo it's all up to him now, and the boys need to have fusion mastered by tomorrow, and Piccolo agrees. Everyone gathers round and says their goodbyes. With Goku having returned to the afterlife, Piccolo takes over their instruction fully, correcting them on the mistakes they made when their fusions fail the first two times. When the fusion works properly, he finds an entirely new challenge in trying to install some discipline and control in the extremely powerful and equally arrogant Gotenks. The first time they fuse properly, Gotenks goes after Majin Buu in his base form and returns to the lookout badly bruised and battered but still alive. Piccolo scolds the young fused warrior for disobeying. After Goten and Trunks fuse while in the Super Saiyan state, Gotenks rushes off to battle again, this time with Piccolo following him. Gotenks wastes a large amount of time demonstrating his speed by flying around the world dozens of times and even taking a nap whilst waiting for Piccolo to catch up, only seeking Majin Buu when there's one minute left in the 30 minute fusion time limit. This causes him to separate before he can even face Buu, leaving his individual fusees to hastily escape before Buu can kill them. While waiting the hour needed for them to recover and fuse again, Piccolo observes the changes in Majin Buu, brought about by his friendship with Mr. Satan, a human who fraudulently took credit for defeating Cell and therefore became regarded as the world's greatest hero. Soon after, he witnessed the split of Mr. Buu into two separate Boos, the battle between them and the absorption of Mr. Buu by Evil Buu, resulting in the even more powerful Super Buu. Piccolo and Dende both immediately notice the sharp increase in power and become even more worried. Super Buu is able to detect Ki and quickly arrives at Kami's lookout, looking for the stronger person who Goku said would fight with him. Piccolo tries to stall Buu by saying the fighter is sleeping and pleads for more time, to which Super Buu angrily refuses. Super Buu then sends out innumerable blasts, one for each person remaining on Earth, killing all but Mr. Satan and the few who could avoid the beams, such as Tien and Xiao Tzu. When Super Buu demands to fight again, Piccolo asks that they have one hour to wake the warrior up and get him prepared, adding that Mr. Satan's child, Fidel, who is brought to the lookout, also wants him to wait. Super Buu reluctantly agrees due to the little of the good Majin Buu that he had in him, but vows to kill everyone straight afterwards. Piccolo wastes no time and quickly ushers Goten and Kid Trunks into the hyperbolic time chamber where they can train for 15 hyperbolic days in the hour that Super Buu has allowed them. While waiting, he explains to Videl how Super Buu knows about her father and his achievement of taming Mr. Buu. After a bit less than 30 minutes, Super Buu loses patience and demands to fight the warrior immediately. Piccolo relents and starts leading Super Buu to the hyperbolic time chamber, taking the long way to maximize the time it'll take, but Buu quickly becomes aware of the ruse and demands for him to take him there immediately. He contacts Goten and Kid Trunks telepathically, telling them that he will be at the room with Super Buu in one minute, giving them six hours to rest up for the fight. Piccolo also has a secret plan that, if Gotenks is not capable of stopping Super Buu, he will destroy the entrance to the hyperbolic time chamber, locking Super Buu and themselves inside for all of eternity. 
Once Superboo is in the room, Piccolo watches as Gotenks attacks him in base form with a multitude of goofy moves, doing no damage as Piccolo gazes in astonishment and loss of hope. Gotenks then turns Super Saiyan, and with a powerful Super Ghost Kamikaze attack, blows Superboo to tiny fragments. Piccolo, knowing what happened last time when Vegeta did relatively the same thing, orders Gotenks to destroy all the pieces of Superboo. It was in vain, as the vapors from the burned pieces regathered and formed back into Superboo, to which Piccolo curses his luck for not completely erasing the vulnerable pieces when they had the chance. Piccolo then asked Gotenks if he had any more special attacks left, which Gotenks falsely denies, stating that all was lost. With seemingly no options left, Piccolo destroys the entrance, trapping them in the room forever. Gotenks immediately insults Piccolo for this decision, and tells him of his plan to surprise Boo with a powerful attack, pretending all is lost. Piccolo responds to this in complete disgust at Gotenks' attitude towards the situation, and they begin to argue. Super Boo, so enraged about not having access to any candy ever again in his location, lets out a mighty scream, ripping the fabric between the dimensions and creating a portal through which he escaped. Gotenks and Piccolo try several times to recreate Super Boo's portal, but without any success. Eventually, when there seems to be no more options, Gotenks reveals that he had something up his sleeve, and turns Super Saiyan 3 with Piccolo once again in astonishment. Gotenks then quickly, and with more ease than the powered up Boo, blared open a portal, which himself and Piccolo escaped from. On exiting, Super Boo boasted of his devouring all adult and teenager friends on the lookout, causing Gotenks to finally get serious and fight Super Boo fully. The resulting battle destroyed Kami's lookout, leaving Piccolo despaired until he was asked by Gotenks to assist him in an attack where Super Boo was battered around like a volleyball while sealed inside Gotenks' galactic donuts. Piccolo continued to observe the battle until Gotenks, just as he had a possible chance to defeat Super Boo with his enormous strength, reverted to his base form shortly before the fusion itself wore off. Seeing no hope left, Piccolo prepared to make his last stand with the two young Saiyans who could no longer fuse for an hour. Super Boo was distracted though, and the appearance of Gohan, now massively more powerful than he had been before, was the reason. Gohan attacked Super Boo and proved to be his superior by far. Super Boo retaliated by exploding and hiding his key from the group. While waiting for him to reappear, Gohan filled Piccolo in on his training at the planet of the Supreme Kais, where he had been since his first encounter with Mr. Boo, while Piccolo was a stone statue and his mystical power up by the workings of Old Kai that predated the current one by 15 generations. They then went to find Dende, whom Gohan sensed was still alive thanks to Popo's sacrifice. On the way, they encountered Mr. Satan and Piccolo picked him up, seeing in him the beginnings of a true hero. Then they reunited with Dende, but it was brief as Super Buu chose this moment to attack them again. Though Gohan stepped up to defeat him for good, Super Buu instead challenged Goten and Kid Trunks to fight him as Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks again to which they obliged. It was part of his plan though, and once Gotenks appeared, he sprung his trap to absorb him for his power and also Piccolo for his intelligence. After being rescued by Goku and Vegeta, as Vegeta, who was purposely absorbed by Buu to free the others, Piccolo was killed along with Goten, Gohan, and Trunks when Kid Buu blew up the Earth. While Goku and Vegeta managed to escape Earth, Piccolo was soon revived along with the Earth and all its inhabitants, by wishes granted by Porunga. He then gave his energy to help form a spirit bomb being created by Goku to finish off Kid Buu after receiving Vegeta's planet-wide message broadcasted by King Kai. God of Destruction, Beerus Saga Sometime after the titanic battle with Majin Buu, Piccolo is first seen scoping Gohan and Videl from a distance when they were leaving a bookstore. Piccolo attended Bulma's party, being given his copy of Gohan and Videl's wedding picture and being frustrated in learning that he had blinked while the picture was being taken once viewing it. When Beerus is angered by Majin Buu for not sharing any pudding, Piccolo teams up with Tian Shin Han and Android 18 to challenge Beerus. The three are taken out with ease without getting a hit, but Piccolo gets healed right away by Dende. While Majin Buu returned to challenge Beerus, Dende senses Beerus's key as a god's and makes Piccolo aware of it. As Gohan began to charge at Beerus, Piccolo tries to warn him but it's too late. Gohan was taken out. Piccolo is stunned by Vegeta's power-up after Bulma was slapped by Beerus. Later, after Oolong has lost to Beerus in a rock-paper-scissors match, Piccolo is asked by Krillin that if he joined the fight, could there have been a chance, but Piccolo denies. The match of rock-paper-scissors decided the fate of the Earth, in which Beerus is ready to blow it up. They are however saved by Goku's arrival to Earth. After Goku has summoned Shenron to learn about the Super Saiyan God, Piccolo claims that the ritual can't be done due to the fact that there's a need of six righteous Saiyans, but there are however four. 
Piccolo is bombarded by Master Roshi and Chi-Chi and was told that Vegeta is a righteous Saiyan. After Goku had transformed into the Super Saiyan God, Piccolo asks for a confirmation from Dende for Goku attaining God Ki, and it is deemed to be true. Golden Frieza Saga After the fight with Goku and Beerus, Piccolo is with Chi-Chi carrying groceries for Videl and Pan, and Piccolo had to carry the groceries as payment for always eating at their place for free. He was then seen babysitting Pan when Gohan and Videl went out shopping. At one point he made funny faces and played peekaboo with her, making her laugh, until her parents return, and just when Piccolo was relieved once more, he senses a bad energy where he was facing, but didn't know what it was until Shenron was summoned and the sky darkened. After that was over, Piccolo predicted that he and his friends were in serious trouble. When Piccolo and Gohan heard news of Frieza's return, they joined Master Roshi, Krillin, and Tian Shin Han in the fight against him and his army of 1,000 soldiers. Tagama shot a ki blast at Gohan and injured him critically. Gohan's heart stops, so Piccolo restarted it with a Ki-Eye Defibrillation. Piccolo tries to attack Tagamo with his efforts, but he isn't strong enough to match him. Gohan helped Piccolo by shooting a blast at Tagamo to get him away. Then, Captain Ginyu switched bodies with Tagamo and takes on the Z Fighters with his immense power. They are easily beat by Ginyu with just single punches to everyone. After that, Piccolo watches Gohan transform into a Super Saiyan and beat Ginyu in several hits, but spared him. Frieza gets furious and starts shooting death beams at Gohan. Piccolo then sacrifices himself to protect Gohan after Frieza shoots him multiple times. He's later revived with the Namekian Dragon Balls by Goku after Frieza's death. Then Piccolo and everyone go to the Capsule Corporation for a feast Bulma's preparing. He hears about Frieza's new form, Golden Frieza, and is intrigued by this. During the feast, he's approached by Gohan, who realized he needs to train, and asks Piccolo if he could do so, and Piccolo accepts this and tells him to maintain his boring body first. Universe 6 Saga Sometime after the battle with Golden Frieza, Piccolo is training with Gohan. As they're training, they're approached by Vegeta, Goku, and Krillin. Piccolo is asked by Goku to participate in the tournament against Universe 6, but Gohan wants to do it. However, Gohan says he can't because there's an important conference he has to attend the day of the tournament. Piccolo then takes up on the offer and says that he would like more information about the situation. Piccolo, Goku, and Vegeta head to Capsule Corporation, where Bulma is waiting on Jaco. Piccolo examines the Super Dragon radar, but while examining it, Piccolo is asked by Goku to train with him and Vegeta in the time chamber. Piccolo, however, declines, saying he would rather train in silence because he can't keep up with them. When Jaco arrives, Piccolo and Ko head outside. When Vegeta notes that Saiyan women are strong-willed, Piccolo realizes why Goku likes Chi-Chi and Vegeta likes Bulma. Five days later, Piccolo is attending the tournament on the Nameless Planet because he has been selected by Goku to participate on Beerus' team. He, along with Goku, Vegeta, Majin Buu, and the strongest fighter Beerus has ever fought. On the way to the Nameless Planet, while Vegeta is curious about a mystery being on the ship, Whis says it's the strongest fighter Beerus has ever faced, Monaka. Vegeta is shocked because of his appearance, then Piccolo says they tend to underestimate their opponents off of appearance. After 2 hours and 45 minutes of traveling, they arrive on the Nameless Planet. Once they arrive, the written test, requested by Vegeta, is ready to commence. Piccolo senses good in Frost after Goku and Vegeta suggest he's Frieza. Vados demands everyone sit down because the exam is beginning. Piccolo stands by Goku and Vegeta as they're approached by one of Universe 6's warriors, Kaba. He reveals that he's a Saiyan from Universe 6 and says interesting thing about their universe's Saiyans, such as having evolved past tales. The original home planet of Sadala is still present in Universe 6, and Saiyans are good beings, so they do not steal planets but rather help defeat evil beings. After this encounter, everyone begins the exam, which is 10 questions to test the basic knowledge of the warriors. After the time span of 10 minutes, Piccolo passes the exam, but Good Buu fails, the only one. Piccolo, Goku, and Vegeta then see Beerus, who demands they select their slots of who fights when. Goku fights first, Piccolo second, Vegeta third, and Monaka fourth. After the referee introduces the singer to sing the universe anthem, he presents the first match between Goku and Botamo. As he watches the match, Piccolo thinks that Goku's stamina will decrease first. Vegeta doesn't think Goku can win if he can't deal damage to Botamo. Piccolo thinks that Goku can only hurt Botamu if he goes all out, but Vegeta doesn't think Goku should. Piccolo is shocked to see that Goku thought of pushing Botamo down and throwing him out of the ring, but he didn't think of that tactic. After Botamo is defeated, Piccolo watches the match between Goku and Frost. 
Piccolo sees Frost transform into his third form. Frost's third form makes him remember all of the negative attributes of Frieza and the events that occurred on planet Namek. Piccolo is surprised when Goku is defeated by Frost. Piccolo confronts Frost, he takes his waiting clothing off, and prepares to fight. Frost first charges towards Piccolo, but Piccolo vanishes and moves above Frost where he starts to prepare his special beam cannon. Frost then fired multiple death beams at Piccolo, but Piccolo dodges all of them except for one, which pierced through his right leg, causing him to fall back on the ground, but then Piccolo uses the multiform. Frost uses an explosive wave to wipe out all of the clones, leaving the one real Piccolo behind, and he then did a few swift attacks towards Piccolo and just as Frost was about to finish him off. Because of his upcoming victory, Frost is off guard. Piccolo uses the mystic arm attack and wrapped around Frost with his left arm, preparing to shoot the special beam cannon at him. Piccolo says that he allowed Frost to pierce his leg in order to create this chance. However, though, Frost then uses the poison against Piccolo, making him feel dizzy and shot the special beam cannon upwards, missing Frost. Frost then moves towards Piccolo and shoots an energy blast through him, causing the Namekian's defeat. Piccolo is disqualified. Though, after everyone discovers Frost's cheat, Piccolo's loss is retracted. Therefore, Piccolo will participate in the next match. However, Vegeta tells the referee to let Frost continue the tournament as Vegeta wanted to beat Frost himself. Piccolo accepts to be forfeited. Piccolo comes back to sit with his team. He announces Vegeta that his upcoming match won't be taken lightly. After Vegeta defeats Frost, Piccolo watches the next match between Vegeta and Mageta. Vegeta gets insane and releases his key. Vegeta's key breaks Vados' new barrier into pieces. The fragments of the barrier dart around. Piccolo dodges them. He is surprised that Monaka didn't even move an inch to avoid. While watching the match between Vegeta and Kaba, Piccolo realizes that Goku is concerned about Hit, the strongest fighter from Universe 6. After taking out Kaba, Vegeta faces Hit. Piccolo can't believe that Vegeta is quickly defeated. Even Goku, Vegeta, and Piccolo couldn't see Hit's attacks. Piccolo hears Whis mention that Monaka is just an amateur and is simply motivation for Goku and Vegeta and is shocked. The match between Goku and Hit begins. Piccolo is stunned when Hit screams and improves his power in such a short amount of time. Piccolo then sees Goku use his old technique and becomes a Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. He's impressed by Goku's extremely fast speed. He then watches as Goku forfeits his match against Hit, deliberately falling out of the ring. Piccolo also stands silent during the arrival of Zeno. Piccolo is then present as the Super Dragon Balls are used to summon Super Shenron, and then returns home with the other Z fighters. Copy Vegeta Saga Piccolo attends the Universe 7 victory party with the other Z fighters, along with Beerus, Whis, and Monaka. Before Goku arrives, Piccolo must assist in protecting Monaka's secret. As Beerus dons a life-size Monaka costume and does battle with Goku, Piccolo and Vegeta interfere in the fight, claiming to be controlled by Monaka. Piccolo uses his mystic attack to grab Goku, while Vegeta whispers to him that he's a terrible actor. After Beerus adjusts his costume, he forcefully throws Piccolo and Vegeta out of the match and continues to fight. Piccolo watches as the fight ends and Monaka's secret is protected in the end. While Gohan and Videl are away on business, Piccolo was tasked with babysitting Pan, who calls him Piccolo. Goku, Chi-Chi, and Goten then arrive at the house, as their house had been destroyed, and Piccolo gives them oddly specific instructions on taking care of Pan and what she likes to eat. Later that night, Piccolo talks with Goku about his delayed onset key disorder, who casually says that his key is so flustered that Piccolo could beat him in an all-out fight. The following day, when Pan disappears, Piccolo angrily yells at Goku and Chi-Chi, and assists them in looking for her. Pan is found by the time Gohan and Videl arrive back home. Future Trunks Saga Piccolo comes to Goku's field and trains through cabbages. Future Trunks returns from his timeline, Piccolo goes to Capsule Corporation to see what's happening. He and the others see Goku Black's appearances and watches the fight between Goku and Goku Black. Piccolo, Vegeta, and Krillin are shocked about Black's superior power. Throughout the fight, Black is pulled back to his timeline by his time ring, and the battle ends. Bulma asks Piccolo and Krillin to fill the holes created from the battle against Black in her garden. Future Trunks comes and asks Piccolo where Gohan is. He suggests that Trunks meets Gohan at his school where Gohan's studying. After the second battle of Goku, Vegeta and Future Trunks in Trunks' timeline, Piccolo comes to the Capsule Corporation, finds ways to beat Zamasu and Black, along with their actual origin that Black was once Zamasu, 
who switched bodies with Goku via the Super Dragon Balls and kills both Goku and his wife and son, then uses a time ring to prevent his death from the altered timeline, where he's killed by Beerus, and quicken up Future Zamasu's same desire by killing Future Gowasu quickly. Because Future Zamasu is now immortal thanks to the Super Dragon Ball in his timeline and destroyed it, Piccolo suggests Goku use Evil Containment Wave to seal one of them to prevent them from teaming up. He gets ready to teach Goku the technique, but Goku's unaware and instantly teleports to Master Roshi's house. Upon Goku, Vegeta, and Bulma's final return to the future where Black destroys both Time Machine and a jar that was used for sealing Black via Evil Containment Wave, Piccolo is horrified to learn that Goku forgot to bring an Evil Containment Wave seal paper to strengthen the containment seal, leaving Goku, Vegeta, and Bulma along with the humanity on Future Trunks' timeline to doom. Before Future Trunks and Mai leave to the new timeline created by Whis, Piccolo and Gohan arrive to say goodbye. Universe Survival Saga Gohan approaches Piccolo in a secluded area. Without needing Gohan to explain himself, Piccolo immediately understands why he came to him and agrees to train Gohan back to his powerful self before the Tournament of Power. Along with the other Z Fighters, Piccolo participates in the Tournament of Power to save Universe 7 from destruction. Piccolo is chosen instantly by Gohan with no debate from Goku, Beerus, or Whis. Later, when Gohan and Goku arrive to inform Piccolo about the tournament, he accepts and offers to get Gohan back into shape to restore his fighting instincts on Goku's behalf. When Android 18 arrived at the Capsule Corporation after agreeing to participate in the tournament, Piccolo told him that he had noticed that the android had become much stronger than before, and tried his hand to thank him for his help in the tournament. Android 17 shook hands with pleasure. When all of the members assemble, Piccolo, alongside the other members of Team Universe 7, depart to the World of Void. When the Tournament of Power began, Piccolo decides to remain with Gohan, Krillin, Tian Shinhan, and Master Roshi. They're attacked by Lavender, Botamo, Comfrey, Shosa, and Durkori. Their team assault does no damage to them. After Universe 9 is erased, Piccolo is just as shocked as the other fighters. They're attacked by Universe 10's Diem. During his attack, Piccolo takes off his weighted clothing. As Piccolo witnesses Kale's rampage, with him noting that Kale cannot control her power. After Kale's rampage, he's separated from the others, but they manage to regroup. Seeing the state of the tournament, Gohan, Piccolo, Tien, and Master Roshi decide to fight separately. He was about to fight Universe 10's Dirasum, but Brienne de Chateau knocked out the latter, shocking Piccolo. Piccolo, alongside Gohan, encounter Botamo. Piccolo lets Gohan fight Botamo while he was watching. After Botamo's defeat, they're challenged by Universe 10's Omni and Rubalt. Piccolo fights Rubalt, easily defeating him with the Hellzone Grenade and blasting him off the stage with an energy wave. After Universe 10 is erased, Piccolo sees Gohan being sad and mournful, and he snaps him out of it, and the two depart. Sometime later, Gohan and Piccolo are approached by Universe 6's Dr. Rota. Dr. Rota wants to reveal his identity. However, before he can do so, he's taken out by a powerful Key Blast. Gohan and Piccolo hide. Piccolo throws a rock out in the open, which is destroyed by the same Key Blast that took out Dr. Rota. Piccolo says it's an attack that focuses energy in one point like Special Beam Cannon and is shot from far away. Also, Piccolo cannot sense the attacker's energy. Gohan asks if Dr. Rota's dead. Piccolo says that if he would be dead, then the attacker would have easily been disqualified, meaning he's still alive. Gohan and Piccolo decide to move to an area with rubble without the attacker seeing them. Afterwards, Piccolo's arm is shot off. However, Piccolo regenerates and the two decide to find the attacker. While spheres are patrolling the area, Piccolo puts his arm out in the open and is shot, however he dodges it. Gohan saw the direction of the shot and the two decide to head there to take out the attacker. Gohan throws a rock which Piccolo blows up with a key blast, creating dust which they use as cover. In the dust, Piccolo finds one of Prum's spheres. Piccolo wonders what the sphere does and the two are attacked once again. Piccolo destroys the sphere, revealing that the sphere had heat. Piccolo then takes a shot that was meant for Gohan, this time both of his arms are shot off. However, Piccolo regenerates once again. Piccolo reveals that the attacker is looking for their body heat, explaining why the attacker was capable of shooting them even in the dust. Piccolo and Gohan then heat up the entire area with heat in order to trick the attacker. Prum then bombards the entire area with key blasts, cutting off Gohan and Piccolo. Gohan and Piccolo hide under a rock as Tien comes to help them, and dodge all the key blasts. Piccolo and Gohan witness as Tien is eliminated by Hermila. After Hermila and Prum are eliminated, Piccolo and Gohan depart together. Later, Gohan and Piccolo confronted Saonel and Pelina. 
Namekians from Universe 6 after stopping their sneak attack on Goku. While initially Gohan and Piccolo were taken aback, having to save each other numerous times, Gohan eventually is able to slowly start to dominate the pair. The fight, however, is unable to be finished due to Goku and Kefla's fight interrupting all other fights. After Goku defeats Kefla, Piccolo and Gohan resume their battle with Saunel and Pilina. While squaring off with them both, Piccolo and Gohan sense a major change in them. Piccolo realizes what they did and engages the superpowered Namekians. Piccolo is driven back into a wall, who confirms Piccolo's theory that they fuse with many Namekians. Piccolo pushes him off as Gohan powers up to his ultimate state and tells Piccolo he can handle both of them no problem, but wants Piccolo to focus all his power. Piccolo begins charging a full power special beam cannon as Gohan engages the pair. Gohan is caught by Saunel who holds them in the air and Piccolo panics and fires what he had charged and it doesn't do anything, forcing Gohan to break free and take the hit for both of them. Unconscious, Piccolo is greeted by Kami and Nail, who point in front of him to see Gohan shielding him. Gohan apologizes and says he'll get serious now and asks Piccolo to do it again as it will work. Piccolo apologizes to Gohan for getting on him about not being a warrior when he himself allowed himself to get caught up in his fellow Namekians fighting spirit. But Piccolo vows to never allow that to happen again. He gets serious and charges up all his power into his special beam cannon as Gohan is dominating both Saunel and Pilina. As Gohan fires his ultimate Kamehameha at the Namekian duo for the finish, Pilina holds them on the stage with a mouth energy wave as Saunel pulls his way through the attack. Assuming he has Gohan, Saunel jumps out of the attack only for Gohan to smile at him to reveal Piccolo behind him, as Piccolo fires his full power special beam cannon, easily piercing clean through both Saunel and Pilina. Seeing his moment at his wounded foes, Gohan unleashes his full power, blowing them clean out of the arena, eliminating Universe 6. Piccolo manages to save 18 from being knocked out of the arena by Gamisalas. After Gohan made Gamisalas' silhouette appear, Piccolo knocked him out of the arena. Shanka creates illusions of erased fighters to fight Team Universe 7. However, Piccolo sees him and knocks him out of the arena with a key blast. Piccolo senses Damom's energy and tries to knock him out of the arena. However, Piccolo is tricked by Damom and knocked out of the arena. Piccolo continues to watch the Tournament of Power from the bench up until Team Universe 7 emerged victorious in the tournament. Galactic Patrol Prisoner Saga while at the lookout, Piccolo and Dende both sense something terrible happening on New Namek. Piccolo tells Dende that a few days ago he stopped being able to sense Goku and Vegeta's energy signature on Earth and that they must have traveled there. He feels that something must definitely be happening there and it cannot be something good. Piccolo then tries using telepathy to contact someone on New Namek only to get no response from them, suggesting to Dende that the Namekians capable of telepathy are all dead, much to Dende's fear. Piccolo is then under the feeling of certainty that something terrible is happening in space. As the Marsareni gang approaches Earth for the Blue Aurum, Piccolo senses their approach and tells Dende someone is approaching. Dende asks Piccolo if they have anything to do with the situation that's happening in space, but Piccolo replies he's not sure. Piccolo decides to leave the lookout to check out the situation and eventually confronts the gang in their ship that he sensed. The gang then spots Piccolo and decide to shoot him down from their ship, but Piccolo easily flies and escapes from the blasts unfazed and lands on top of their ship. Getty then spots Piccolo standing on top of their ship and informs his siblings about it. Piccolo then comments to the gang that they've been rude guests after shooting at him without questioning him first. Piccolo is then in the middle of a fight against them where he easily dodges Getty's bind wave attacks. Pasta then proceeds to fall some stones within Piccolo's vicinity, and having infused the stones with his key, proceeds to explode them around Piccolo. Penne then charges toward Piccolo and uses her mystic attack in an attempt to grab him only to grab his cape. Piccolo then extends his arms out of the cloud of smoke and grabs Getty and Penne, throwing them towards Pasta who they hit, and weakening all three individuals once they fall down. Piccolo then ties the gang up and asks who they are, and questions them if they're tied to the disturbance in space. Pasta then replies that they're just friendly aliens passing through and apologizes for being so quick to attack him. Piccolo believes that they are not affiliated with whatever's going on in space, so he releases them and tells them to never come back to Earth. Just when they're in their ship heading off to space, Bulma and Dende head towards Piccolo and Dende shouts for Piccolo not to let the gang get away, as they're allied with the one responsible. Piccolo quickly shoots down the ship and confronts the gang for tricking him, but he's told that it's too late and they've already contacted Moro's main forces. Everyone returns to the lookout including the captured Macareni gang. 
When Jacko arrives, he brings along Eska, and Piccolo is distressed to hear that he, Dende, and Eska are the last three surviving Namekians. When Jacko is informed by HQ that three of Moro's minions, 7-3, Shimorika, and Yunba are heading for Earth, Piccolo asks Jacko what they need to know about them, and he is told of 7-3's ability to steal other people's powers for half an hour. When they suddenly and unexpectedly appear on the lookout using a warp portal, Piccolo stops Shimorika from killing the Macareni gang telling him that no killing is allowed on the sanctuary and that evildoers are not welcome on Earth. Caught unaware, 7-3 grabs Piccolo, stealing his powers and fires a special beam cannon at him that Piccolo barely dodges. After Jocko is punched off the lookout, Piccolo rushes to his aid believing he can't fly, though Jocko saves himself using his jet boosters. With 7-3 having pursued Piccolo, the two begin a battle where each uses the same abilities at the same level of power. However, Piccolo comes off the worst due to 7-3 having an infinite amount of stamina. The two engage in a special beam cannon clash with Jocko telling Piccolo to try and hold on for 30 minutes so that his powers return to normal, but Piccolo says he's unable and is seemingly overwhelmed. He is in fact saved by Gohan and warns him not to let 7-3 grab him, and that he's currently the strongest fighter they have on Earth. After he sees Gohan take 7-3 down, he joins his side and cites his mixed feelings on seeing what is essentially a copy of himself being taken down so easily. After 7-3 switches to using Moro's abilities, Piccolo joins the others in assaulting him, only to be blocked off and have his energy absorbed. Drained, Piccolo and the others are beaten by Shimorika and Yunba until they are ordered to return by Saganbo. Two months later, Piccolo joins the Dragon Team and Galactic Patrol in preparation for the Galactic Bandit Brigade's assault on Earth. When the convicts scatter across Earth to steal its riches, the defenders of Earth split up, but Piccolo stays with Gohan to take on the main threat. An invisible 7-3 appears from behind the pair and steals their abilities once again. However, this time they are prepared, and despite first using Piccolo's and then Gohan's abilities, the real Piccolo and Gohan are able to outmatch him by using teamwork. The two take him down using a unison special beam cannon and Masenko, and 7-3 resorts to using Moro's energy draining abilities again. Before being able to though, he's attacked by Android 17, who arrives along with Android 18. Piccolo gives his thanks for the two of them being there as they do not have energy that can be drained, making them an ideal match for 7-3. When Android 17 almost finishes off 7-3, Moro finally appears, and Piccolo notes that he's on another level. Saganbo steps forward and asks if he can take care of them as Moro shares some of his power with him. Piccolo and the others find themselves greatly outpowered as Piccolo curses their fortune that they still have to deal with another powerful enemy before Moro. Continuing the fight alongside Gohan, Piccolo and Gohan fire a powerful blast in unison directly at Saganbo, but he's unharmed and merely batters them away. Before things can get worse however, Goku arrives and quickly overpowers Saganbo, though Piccolo is initially unable to either see his movements or sense his energy. When Goku joins Gohan and Piccolo's side, he praises the strength they had obtained over the past two months and watches as Goku battles Saganbo, which eventually results in his death after being given more energy by Moro than his body could handle. Piccolo then continues to watch as Goku goes up against Moro and eventually backs off further to join Android 17 and 18's side commenting on the ongoing fight and saying that Goku appears to be faster of the two. However, Goku loses the bout when he pushes his power too far. Gohan suggests going to help him, but Piccolo tells him that it would be reckless to jump in when their power could be absorbed to make Moro stronger. Shortly afterwards, Vegeta returns to Earth and is the next to take on Moro. As Vegeta battles on, Piccolo voices his surprise at his newfound level of power though notes that it still will not be enough for him to win. However, he realizes soon that Moro is getting weaker just before noticing that energy is being extracted from him and is forming a ball in the sky. Goku refers to the technique as forced spirit fission, and Vegeta pauses his battle momentarily to tell Piccolo that he could extract the Namekians that he had combined with long ago. After Vegeta releases Moro's stolen energy back to its point of origin, Piccolo tells Goku that he could not get over how much Vegeta has grown as a human being, having gone from once invading Earth to now saving the universe. He owes this growth to Goku, while telling him that he has not changed at all since he's known him and never needs to. Unfortunately, Vegeta's advantage does not last for long when Moro achieves greater power after absorbing 7-3. After Moro steals Vegeta's abilities and takes him down for a second time, Piccolo tells Goku that the situation is worse than he realized now that Moro has a Force Spirit Fission for himself, as it means they cannot rely on fusion as a last resort. 
Piccolo enters the battle along with Gohan to distract Moro long enough for Goku to pull off the instant Kamehameha, but Moro, using his Piccolo's ability to regenerate, quickly heals from the damage and takes Goku down in brutal fashion, followed by Gohan. Dende, making his way to the battlefield to heal everyone, telepathically contacts Piccolo, though Piccolo urges him to stop after realizing that Moro can hear him too. Moro erects a barrier to avoid interference, and Piccolo plans to use it to his advantage in firing an all-or-nothing attack. But before he's able to do so, Moro takes Piccolo down using a special beam cannon. Piccolo is eventually healed by Dende, and he and the others return to the battlefield during the final battle between Goku and Moro. When Goku is having his energy drained, Piccolo asks Vegeta if he's able to use his forced spirit fission in reverse by giving energy to Goku. Piccolo and the others give their energy to Vegeta so he can pass it on to Goku in an attempt to revitalize him, though this only proves enough to transform him into Super Saiyan Blue. However, when all hope seems lost, Goku receives the god power that he needed in order to transform him back into Autonomous Ultra Instinct where he promptly finishes the job. Piccolo and the rest of his friends soon celebrate their hard-earned victory afterwards with a feast at Satan House. Peaceful World Saga Ten years after Kid Buu's defeat, Piccolo attends the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament and witnesses the emergence of Oob, the good human reincarnation of Kid Buu. When picking the tournament fighter's places, Piccolo along with Dende overhears Goku claim Oob as the reincarnation of Majin Buu. The second match between Goku and Oob, Piccolo could tell that Goku hasn't been that happy in a long time. In the middle of the match, Goku leaves with Oob to be his martial arts teacher and train him. Baby Saga Five years later, when Baby arrives on the Earth, Piccolo is the first one who detects the evil presence of the Neo Machine Mutant Tuffle, known as Baby, after he possesses the body and mind of Goten. After Baby transfers bodies to Gohan, Piccolo arrives on the scene to save Goten. He fires special beam cannon at Baby, but his attack ends up missing its mark, and he's quickly blasted by the possessed Super Saiyan Gohan's Kamehameha, though he survives the attack. He does not appear again until near the end of the saga when he saves a young boy who was left behind during the evacuation of Earth, as it was moments away from being about to explode. When Goku returns to teleport both Piccolo and the boy away, Piccolo gives him the energy he needs to do so, but decides to remain behind. The reason for the Earth's destruction was due to the Black Star Dragon Balls, artifacts made by Kami before he split with King Piccolo. By Piccolo's sacrifice, the Black Star Dragon Balls will be turned eternally to stone. His last moments show him having a telepathic farewell conversation with Gohan before dying again in the explosion on Earth. He does not wish to be brought back to life so the Earth can be at peace from the Black Star Dragon Balls. He's sent to heaven by King Yama. Super 17 Saga A year later, Piccolo figures out that Goku is stuck in hell and he starts blasting heaven so that King Yama is forced to send him to hell. Piccolo and Dende then create a gateway between Hell and Earth that allows Goku to make it back and fight Super 17. Shortly afterwards, Nappa, General Blue, Staff Officer Black, and Major Metalatron, having been killed and sent back to Hell by Vegeta and Pan, respectively attempt to fight Piccolo, although Piccolo presumably beats them. Shadow Dragon Saga In the final episode, Until We Meet Again, Goku goes to Hell to say his goodbye to Piccolo. Piccolo gets angry and yells at Goku. Goku raises his hand and wants to shake hands with Piccolo. After shaking hands with Goku, Piccolo realizes that Goku will go with Shenron. Goku promises to get Piccolo back into heaven where he rightfully belongs. Ironically, Piccolo seems to have become a protector of hell, as he's shown defeating a giant monster who is causing trouble, while the Watchkeeper Ogres from Hell cheer him on. Piccolo is last seen discovering that Goku has already left and bids farewell to him. Did you enjoy our video? Please check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.